Strap footing is an important structural element and very useful in some practical situations. But what exactly is a strap footing? How does it work? And how do you design it? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to discuss some engineering background in the design of this system, the structural system called strap footing. Let's get started. When an exterior column in a building is closed by the property line, the footing that supports the column would be eccentric and it would tend to tilt and overturn. This problem can be prevented if we connect this exterior footing with the next, with the adjacent interior column and footing in the building. We use a strap beam for this purpose. So the complete system is called strap footing system and it consists of two spread footings, the exterior spread footing, the interior spread footing, and then the strap beam that connects both footings. For construction practical purposes, the bottom of the three elements is the same, but the thickness of the three elements, the thickness of the exterior footing, the thickness of the strap beam, and the thickness of the interior footing can be different depending on the structural requirements. So a strap footing is a special type of a combined footing. It's very useful when the distance between the two columns is long, say 20 feet or so. In that case, a regular combined footing would be expensive due to the large uh, excavation required. In those cases, it's better and cheaper to design a, a strap footing instead. So how do you size the three elements? How do you size the exterior footing, the interior footing, and the strap beam? One assumption in the design of strap footing is that the system is perfectly rigid. That means that the strap beam doesn't deflect. So the complete system acts as a unit. As a result, the bearing pressures are always uniform under the two footings because the reaction is supposed to be applied at the center of the, uh, of the footing, regardless of the position of the column. This is possible because all the moments are transferred to the strap beam in the longitudinal direction, so the beam needs to be designed for that purpose. To design the strap beam, we need to generate the shear and bending moment diagrams for the system. Basically, the shear along the beam is uniform, but the bending moment varies linearly. For this reason, this system is also called cantilever footing as well. Please note that the bending moment along the beam is negative, which means that the main rebars along the beam needs to be placed at the top. This is a typical reinforcement in a strap footing system. The strap beam needs to be reinforced with the stirrups and uh, longitudinal rebars at top and bottom, being the top bars the most important bars in the system. The reinforcements on the footings should be placed at the bottom in, in two directions, and the thickness of the footing is controlled by shear, the one-way shear at a distance d from the column face in both directions, and the rebars are designed according to the bending moments on the footing. ASDIP Foundation includes the design of strap footings. I have prepared an example in ASDIP Foundation just to show how easy it is to design a strap footing in the program. In the geometry tab, you enter the information about the sizes and dimensions, the column to column distance, and exterior and interior footing dimensions, uh, length and width, footing thickness, soil cover, and the water table. In the strap beam tab, you have the dimensions of the beam. In the columns tab, you have the dimensions of the columns on top of each footing, exterior and interior. In the loads tab, there are two options, either a set of load cases or a single set of uh, pre-combined loads. In either case, you enter uh, the actual load uh, moment and shear force. In the material tab, you enter the properties and the footings, beams, columns, and the soil. Finally, in the reinforcement, you specify the rebars for the footings, for the strap beam, and for the columns. The program gives you an at-a-glance view of the design, or you can see in a single screen if uh, something is failing or if everything passed. In the condensed tab, you see the results in more detail, grouped by topic. For example, here is the exterior footing, one-way shear, punching shear, flexure. 
same applies to the interior footing here the design of the strap beam in shear and in flexure uplift calculation sliding the transfer between the column and the footing and then the column design if you go to the detail tab you see a more detailed set of calculations step by step exposed formulas and also references to the ACI code so everything can be followed uh, step by step for example here is the flexure calculations for the exterior footing and here for the interior footing and so on the punching shear a complete set of calculations in the graph tab you see graphically the soil bearing pressures under the footings in the diagrams tab you see the shear and bending moment diagrams in the columns you see the interaction diagrams for both columns the exterior column and the interior column and finally in the construction tab you see the reinforcement of the entire strap footing system the rebars on the footings and the rebars on the strap beam so when you change something in the in the input you see immediately the change reflected in the results and you can follow the design step by step. In summary, a strap footing is a very useful structural system for, for some situations, particularly when a column is closed by the property line and is to be connected to the interior column in the building. The design can be cumbersome and time consuming, but if you use a structural software like ASDIP Foundation, you can design the system in minutes. With this, we conclude the presentation of this strap footing design. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.